Hello everyone and welcome to this class setup and new features back to school made easy with Shobi. My name is Chris Lawson and I am very proud to be your presenter today uh, as one of Shobi's resident teachers, which I'll explain in a moment. An absolute pleasure to see so many of you here today. Thank you so much for coming along and let's jump straight into it. So like I said, my name is Chris Lawson. I am a resident teacher at Shobi. What that basically means is I am a full-time UK class-based teacher of a year five class, in fact, year six class um, next week. I have been a teacher since 2012, a long time Shobi user and a Shobi certified educator. The school I work in is a primary school with around 100 iPads in either one-to-one -one or shared devices. And we also have an IT suite available to us as well with PCs and numerous other aspects too. Then Shobi told me to put an interesting fact for which I did, which was that penguins, when there's more than one of them, it's called a waddle. And not only is it a fascinating fact, it just makes me giggle inside every time I say it. But what they meant was an interesting fact about me. So I stuck with a the theme of penguins and I just put that I'm obsessed with penguins. Um, so apparently that's supposed to make me feel a little bit more, I don't know, relaxed or you a little bit more relaxed, but you now know that I'm obsessed with penguins. But hey, let's get cracking and get into the good stuff. So a warm welcome to you all today, whether you are back at school already, whether you're due to return, um, whether you're going into new classes that you've never been in before, or whether you are in um, a school and you just need to top yourself up. Or if you're here just for the swag, um, which we are giving away during this session, and also um, to get a sneak peek at some of those new features. But before we get into it fully, let's take a look at Shobi and its hybrid learning platform. So Shobi is a hybrid learning platform which allows teachers to quickly and easily deliver rich and personalised feedback to students of all abilities on any device. And this is something that has been the core and the heart of my classroom for many, many years now. I've been using Shobi for a long time. And it's something that I'm really passionate about. And I hope today, especially in this more back to school and advanced features that we're going to look at, some pro, some basic, um, we're going to take a deep dive really into its functionality and really show you what it can do and how it can realistically be a hub of all your classroom activity for you and your students, and how it can have a real positive impact on your teaching and learning too, making it not only more impactful and better, but also meaning that you might get a little bit more time back in there as you go to. So let's have a look at what we're going to cover today. So we'll be covering today uh, getting started and getting set up with some more of the advanced nuances, looking at getting prepared for the new school year, in particular um, for any of your teachers who are returning, how you can class copy, assignment copy, how you can mark and assess like an absolute pro. Also looking at working with some of our other apps, including Socrative and Explain Everything that we partner with, and also a sneak peek at some back to school fresh features, which is super exciting too. So it's an absolute pleasure to have you here today. Um, I am joined by my super helper in Sarah. Sarah is in the background and is willing to answer any questions that you may have. So please do place those into the question and answer section. Sarah is also around to answer any questions as we go or nudge me if I forgot something, um, as we're going to find out in a moment. So we are going to jump in and we're going to look at getting started. And we're going to start by looking at the QR code login. Now, I have learned from my mistakes, which is one of our school rules. And I just wait now for Sarah to ping me a message and say that she can see my two iPad screens because I have done a whole webinar when no one was able to see the screens, which wasn't a benefit. So we wait for the little noise, there we go. And Sarah is ready and willing and she's been able to send me that message. So let's get started. 
So this is really important to state from the ground up that this is actually my class. This is my actual teaching class, which I used last year and I've already set up ready for the new school year. And as a result, it will be a little bit messy because it's my classroom and we've got lots of different things going on, but hopefully you'll be able to see a real life working example. And I'll also be really clear to point out to you where a feature is a basic feature and where a feature is a pro feature. So we're going to look at QR code logins. If you're not aware on how a QR code login works, it's just like an ISBN, but it's more fancy and it's square usually or any sort of shape. Um, I can show you one now. So if we just jump into my general class, for example, I'm going to class members. You can see here, Freddie has got a QR code and this QR code looks like this. On the right hand side here, you're actually able to see a teacher device, a student device, sorry. And so what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna show you how simple and easy it is for a student to log in. And then I'm gonna show you how you can bulk create these so that you can print them off and keep them in the student's trays, wrap them around, not wrap them, <laughs> dangle them carefully around the children's necks and um, obviously have them available for them to get quick and easy access. This is a particularly important thing when we're looking at shared iPads too. So I've got my iPad here in front of me and I'm going to click sign in at the bottom and I'm gonna click this time sign in with QR code. I'm gonna position it and I'm in. That's literally it. Not had to do anything else. I had to put a username or password. Now, obviously the caveat to this is be really careful with these codes. I've just refreshed that because if we send this um, webinar out, that would basically be you able to take a screenshot of that screen and get into that student's account. So I've refreshed it. It's a little bit like a new password for that student. And that just means that it's secure and we teach for children, but it's just as important that they don't lose that QR code as if they were going around shouting out their password to each and every one. So it's all about that digital e-learning, the safety as well. So what this QR code is a fantastic feature, but something that Shobi introduced last year was the opportunity to bulk download these. So tapping on QR codes here, selecting the students which you wish to download, you can actually take particular students out if you wanted, and just tapping get QR codes says here, don't share them on social media. Um, and you can see here now, this is gonna generate a PDF, which will allow you to print it off and um, print out and cut them out and give them to the students or leave them in a safe place or wherever it may be. I always like to do this as well, just print them off and keep them um, as a teacher copy. So if a child doesn't know where it is and they've lost a QR code, they can get in super simple and super easily. So that's almost like in the front of my teacher planner at the start of a new year. So that is QR codes. That is a basic feature and it is available without a pro subscription. So um, enjoy being able to do bulk QR codes, which is absolutely fantastic. There is cases as well here. I'm just looking at some of the people who've joined. I can see that we've got some primary school teachers and we've also got some secondary school teachers here. There's nothing better than a key stage three or four student towards the year 15, age 15 and 16 who are trying to get they can't remember the password, they can't get into their account to do their schoolwork, but you're there to save the day with a QR code. Um, it really is just helping out wonderfully well. And so we can move on now and we can take a little look at how we can get ourselves ready and prepared for the new class year. So we're moving now and we're going to take a look at this class copying aspect. So class copying is for any teachers who are predominantly starting either mid-year, they might be um, copying some content, but most often it's at the end of the year or beginning of a new year, and a teacher will want to create a carbon copy, basically, of their class. It won't copy over the students, but it will copy all the content that the teacher has pushed out through the shared items folder. So you can see my little cursor on the screen here. Ooh, drop my T's, sorry, my little cursor. And what we're going to do here is we're going to jump into this general one. So jumping into general and, oh, look, my obsessions with penguins returns up here. Um, not intentional, this is genuinely my class as I, as I set it up. We're going to go to the cog, the wrench, the spanner, the settings icon, and we're going to go into class settings here. I'm just going to get rid, actually, of that. Um, class code. So 
There we go. I've just got rid of that class code so people can't see it on this webinar, but actually it means that no one is able to join that class too. It's a really cool feature in the class, um, on the class codes there. So I'm gonna go to copy class here. And I'm going to keep the name the same. I think it might just add copy after it. Yeah, uh, I'm happy with the word copy after it. And I'm gonna have an option to lock the assignments or not. So basically, do I want the students when they join to have access straight away to this content or do I wanna release it over days, weeks and months? So I'm gonna lock these assignments. I'm just gonna tap copy class. I'm going to take a sip of my drink. And that has then now copied that class and all of that content, so all the PDFs, created a new class code to join. And we can then see that if I just jump into my class here, we can see the copy here and you could jump in and join it. Um, a student could join it by tapping on the plus icon and typing 39CH8 in. Um, again, if you're watching this webinar back, you won't be able to do that because I'll have changed the class code by that point. Now, when we go into the new one, we'll see that all the features have remained the same, including these, which are the folders, which are a pro feature. Uh, but you can see here that the assignments are locked. And this is important for me, so it means that no students are getting access to content before I want them to. So this is the class copy feature. We also have another feature in Shobi, which is known as the assignment copy feature. This is really useful if you're working between different classes, but you want to give the same content, known as a co-teaching. Co-teaching, again, is an option for a pro user, but the assignment copy feature is a basic feature. So here I've got an assignment called maths. I can navigate into my assignment called maths and I can copy the assignment. And what's so cool, this is not known by, it's not shouted about and it's not seen very often. Up here we have three dots. You can actually copy to multiple classes. So you could copy a message or an assignment to all these classes, click copy assignment, and then it will go into all those classes. I'm not going to do that because my live classes, but that's basically what you'd be able to do. So you can copy into individual classes like so and actually put them into individual folders, or you can copy direct to particular classes and multiple at the same time, which is a really cool little feature and saves a lot of time. Saves a lot of time for myself when we were in lockdown and we were sending content out, letters out to maybe five, six classes at once. So that's a nice little feature for you there. So that is assignment copy, and that is also class copy. The last thing that I want to show to you now is how to be prepared with the scheduling tool. So scheduling allows you to make automized decisions based on what you want the class to do at a particular time and date. So again, jumping into the class setting, we can see here that there's a due date, which you can choose. So I want this to be due on the 4th. That means that after the 4th, it doesn't lock, but any students who do not, uh, who respond after that date, it'll be marked as late because it's after the due date and the due time here. You can set a schedule. So you can set a schedule, which would look something like this. So my Assignment is locked until the, mm, let me see, until I want to make it editable on the second. So my assignment is now locked. Let's just wait for that to happen. So my assignment is now locked. It will open on the second, which is a Thursday, and it will close on the Saturday on the fourth. Um, it will become late and then I could actually close it again. So set schedule add to the schedule when I want to lock it on the due date and click save. So that's automized now for me. So I don't need to think or worry about sending it out, unlocking it, closing it. And this is really useful. I'll show you an actual worked example of this within my live class, which I've already set up for next year in my maths class. So here we're going to do morning maths. And you can see here that my morning maths for September is due on October the 1st. And if we jump into it, I can, you can see my schedule, which has been open on the 2nd and then lock it on the 1st of October. Um, and at the moment it's editable, but actually I can have it locked too. Let's take a look now at what that actually does to the student device 
when you manipulate these settings. So I'm going to go to this maths class now, and I'm going to go into the morning maths. And you'll see on this student that this is not tappable. It says the assignment is locked. Mr. Lawson has locked it, locked it, but, miss, but you will get a notification when he unlocks it. So if I tap here now, this is what I love about Shobi. It's so instant. I just tap on editable and click save, just like that the content and the work becomes available for the student. And so this means that it's instantaneous. You can do it in front of the children. You can do it five minutes before, or you, like I said, you could actually have Shobi do it for you um, as you go through, which is a lovely, lovely feature. The next thing that I want to talk about with you today is the shared items folder. The shared items folder is the absolute hub of all content within Shobi. And again, because this is a more advanced and um, building on the foundations which you've hopefully already acquired, this shared items explanation is going to show you an already worked example. So where previously, if you joined me for my previous webinar, you'd have seen me how I set it up. This is showing you how you can use it within the classroom. So here we've got... oh. I'm just going to pretend that's not shown and then show it in a minute. Um, <laughs> so, damn it, Sarah. Damn it. I'm, the spoiler's gone. Um, anyway, I'll take a sip of my water at that point. Okay. Yes, Sarah, I know. Spoiled it. Right, here we go. So, here we can see a morning maths that my students are going to do as they come into school in the morning. And I've set different levels. I've set a bronze, a silver, a gold, and they'll work through the bronze onto the silver, onto the gold, for example. You can see here that I've set different students. So down the left-hand side, I've selected just these five students who are going to do the bronze level, the silver level, the gold level, and the platinum level. No students at the moment. That utilizes what's known as the send to no one feature. So it allows it to almost like show we be a mini server that allows you to keep all your content that you require until you require and need it. So here you can see a worked example where we've got particular students on particular ones. We can go into Freddy and see what's been pushed out to him and see that just September gold has been set out. We can also just tap the three dots and show the large previews or not. So we'll go with large previews for now. I decide, though, that I don't want Freddie to have this particular one. I actually want him to have the silver one. So I go back into the shared items folder. I navigate to the one which it was, and then I tap on edit. I'm going to remove Freddie. And when I click save, keep an eye on the right hand side. See now it's disappeared. I can add him to the silver one. Oops. Slightly wrong click there, sorry. Add him to this one, like so. Click save. You can see instantaneously it comes up there. And then I, in the meantime, want to re add him back in because he's done really well on the silver. Click save. And that brings him back in there. And you'll see underneath we've got a silver and we've got a gold. This is brilliant as well, as you can see from this send to no one feature, because what it allows you to do here is it allows you to see which students in particular have been um, it sent to, but also you've, you're holding something back. So I could actually push this out to everyone by just clicking select all. And then now that will be pushed out to every single student in the class, as we will see here, silver, gold and platinum. So that is the send to all, send to no one, send to a select group of the shared items folder. In my opinion, one of the great ways and utilizations of the tool. Um, I did show in previous webinar another option, which was to actually do the exact same thing, but just using spelling tests and voice notes, um, which I can just show you very quickly. So going into English, going to spelling, super speller, love a bit of alliteration. And we can see here where the certain spellings that have been pushed out to the 17 students. Oops, no one needs to hear my voice. Um, I'll spare you that today. And then obviously the, oh, bear with me, just swap that over. There we go. Let's just 
just made it a little bit bigger, which is going to throw us off a little bit. So just change that like there and that there. There we go. So teacher one is still the larger of the two. And then here you can see where you can go through and you can push them out to different people as we go through. So we're going to keep on moving and we're going to keep looking at how we can utilize these features, which we would class as basic features, free features, but really start to push them to the next level. The next thing that I want to take a look at with you is the ability to use the rich voice and, and text and pen tool feedback to really utilize the best possible assessment feedback flow that you can get within a classroom. So to do this, we're going to stay in this maths class and we're going to just jump and have a look at this second maths folder. Nope this maths folder for morning maths in September. So again, we can gonna focus on Freddy um, as I'm signed in as Freddy. One of the things that Shobi does allow you to do, which it cannot be shown unfortunately on a webinar because you can't show a screen recording whilst doing a screen recording. But basically if as a student or a teacher, I press this record screen button, no, it's not gonna let me do it, is it? Oh, that's never happened before. Now I'm excited. No. No. <laughs> oh, I got so excited then, people. I'd never got that far before. That is a point where you'd get a little mini picture of yourself up on the screen. <laughs> Sarah's laughing. I can, I can tell. Sarah's laughing in the background thinking, oh, Chris, you thought you had it there. So... A perfect opportunity there for the child actually to be able to articulate themselves as they go through their learning and say where they've gone right, where they've gone wrong, where they found things difficult, where they think found things hard. And obviously, because it's a screen recording, it's actually capturing all their tools, all their ability to write everything that they do. It's capturing that live and in the moment. There's another couple of hidden quick features that I want to share with you that you might not be aware of. It's a multi-page, 30-page document. And you can see down the bottom, we've got an opportunity just to flick through the 30 pages to where we want. Small feature, but not in other applications. Um, I've been many a time having to flick through page after page after page in something like Google Classroom to be able to do that. This has got a really quick selector and clicker um, to be able to do that. And as we touch the base in a little minute, when we look at quick marking, you'll see where that comes into its own as well. So here, for example, we can see that I'm going to answer this question. I'm going to model some fantastic math skills. So um, you can see here, I've chosen a random date. I'm gonna make it a little bit more. Yeah, go with 6th of September. Um, so two, I'm gonna go with two. Oh dear. Go back out of that and back in. My Apple Pencil doesn't like that. Here we go. Must have got really. Oh, that's an easier question. I'll take that one all day long. 373 three and 59. I'd be telling the children we should add 60 there, but never mind. 3 and 9 is 12. 7 and 5 is 12. And 1 is 13. Don't forget about me. 3 and 1 is 4. 4, 3, 2. Now, as you can imagine, I've just taken and jumped into a random piece of that document. It tells me, as you will have seen there on Freddie's document, that there is a paperclip next to it now, which means that Freddie's definitely done some work on that. But I can actually use the tools within Shobi to help me to do that in numerous ways. The first way is in my opinion, one of the hidden gems of Shobi. So we did it in silver and we can see the little pen. If we tap on that now, it will show me that he wrote on page 17 and it will actually allow me to tap on that and it'll take me to directly page 17. Can you imagine being a teacher having to go through all those pages to find the content and the work that they've done? Um, so for me, this is a massive, massive feature and one which we really should be shouting about. The second thing I wanted to show you here was the notification or activity centre, which says here that Freddie C wrote on the top of this one on silver. So if I tap here for Freddie C, again, 
takes me direct to the place where he's written. I can jump back into here. I can test this system out to its max. I can just choose a random page, put on a mark. Oh, I know that one. I'll answer that one. Three, nine, five, zero, zero. 39,500, done. Where on earth, where oh where has Freddy put his work? But we can jump back and go to the activity center if we want and it will tell me here and I can click on it and it will take me directly to it. Fantastic. Or I can do it the alternate way, tap on the pen and see that it was like, oh, no, page 16 he'd written on. And there we go, we can see that there. So again, this is brilliant for being able to see students work. And this is only me mocking it up from the beginning. And what I wanna do now is I wanna jump into my class from last year. I want to show you how this works in reality. Because in reality, I've got 27, 30 children in my class. You can see all these notifications down here. What I wanna be able to do is I want to be able to go into Adams and I want to be able to see what he's done within his work. And I can do that simply by tapping on that pen tool. I can see that I added, I wrote on, then he wrote on, and then I wrote on and so forth. You can also see his flow of work here from what I've uploaded. So this is again, really important to see a mix of photographs of PDFs uploaded, of videos which have been included from our scheme of work to help support students if they're finding things tricky and difficult, building independent learning, personalizing that learning for those students. Really, really important. I'm really impressed with that aspect. Now, here we can see a perfect example of where a student, where a teacher, for example, has placed out some content. I used the blank document feature. I wrote on the blank document te teacher 2,391. And then I wanted all my students to review this piece of content. Now, what I wanna point out to you here is this opportunity with quick marking that really does open up a world of possibilities. So here, for example, we can jump into the shared items folder we tap on the first one here, who's Freddy, and then simply we can navigate to the right as we go, tapping on that button and seeing all these students' responses super easily, super quickly. And I can also then go, okay, I want to take a look at Annie's work in a bit more detail. I'm going to tap on the 20 documents that she has, and I want to have a look at the work that she did on the 7th of the 9th, and it will jump and it will take me directly to that. I can see that she did some work here on it. I can zoom in on this work and then I can go, oh, right, so you got that. What did the next person get? What did the next person get? Did they do it? There we go. Yeah, they did. Did they do it? Yeah. So I can then start to do assessment. Notice this is, in my opinion, well, there's many good features. I've zoomed right in on the ones column there, but I can then go to the next one in the ones column and the next one and the next one. I can check that ones column. Maybe that's the only bit where children normally make a mistake, for example. Um, and it obviously is super intuitive and super easy to do too. So that's the shared items folder to distribute your content, but then your quick marking folder to actually enable you to get through that content super easily and super quickly. And so you can see here, lovely comments coming backwards and forwards between me and the students as well. I found I really found confident in rounding. I found it quite easy, especially this lesson. Great to hear. I'm happy about that. I've done my job there. Um, I've made the hard learning seem easy. Other little things um, to get prepared for the new school year you can see here where I just actually created, uh, just uploaded a PowerPoint and you can, without even going into a PowerPoint, you can look at what's in it and have a sneak peek. And I just use this as my interactive whiteboard, um, writing on this on Shobi uh, and, and doing so that way. Doesn't have the animations, but they're not required in this example here. From this, we can then do lots of other things, including if I could mention a pro feature, which is grades. So here I could actually grade this particular piece of work. I could tap plus, I could add a grade. And I'm in a primary school setting. I really do enjoy using emojis. So I'm gonna give that a um, sunshine smile. Um, and you can see here down the left-hand side that that then gives the student a grade of a sunshine, sunshine smile. So this is again, a perfect opportunity to be able to provide feedback to the student and going back to the student's device again, go back to the activity center 
they can straight away see in a totally different place in Shobi what Mr. Lawson has provided as feedback. And you can actually see here a sneak peek into something else, which I'm going to be showing you in a moment, which is the Socrative integration and how to push out grades. So we've covered here quite a few things. We've covered quick marking, grades, which I'm going to touch on in a little bit more detail, and screen recording at that point. Here, I'm just going to stop for a moment. I recognize I talk quickly. I've got a lot to get through. I just want to offer people the opportunity to ask any questions that they may have at this point in time. Is there anything that I've shown that you'd like me to show again, but slower? Let me know. And then if there's nothing else and Sarah spots nothing else, we'll carry on. We're going to jump in to have a look at how to um, use voice notes very quickly. Although I've sort of touched on that with regards to spelling tests and so forth. We're going to look at explain everything, Socrative integration. I'm going to show you a little bit about social, emotional well-being and learning. And then lastly, we're going to finish off by having a sneak peek at some of the new features that are due soon. The SMR for you there would be a pouring of the, <laughs> of the water. Okay. No questions coming as of yet, so we'll keep on going. So one of the features which obviously is critical and pinnacle in my classroom is the use of voice notes. Now voice notes is something that allows me to provide feedback and quality feedback in a lot quicker and easier context. But it isn't just for me as a teacher. Our students have earphones, individual, and they plug in and they get their feedback via voice every single morning. If the feedback's been given, sometimes I'll give whole class feedback, sometimes I'll give individual feedback. But then again, we can actually put the power of the voice in the students' hands and we can look at how that can help support and revolutionise teaching and learning. So in this example, we're going to jump into a maths class, an English class, sorry, we can jump into a Beowulf set of work. We can see here an independent application. You can see where the grade tool has been used here, again, to provide feedback. Um, some teachers may not like the fact that I've used a red emoji. Red means stop. It's a universal signal. It doesn't mean you've done it wrong. It means you need to stop what you do before you move on. Again, it's all about your ethos and your values within the class. But I'm going to have a look at Wills here. And we can see here I've uploaded some content to help and support. And then here we can see I've provided some voice feedback on the 11th of October. But if we actually jump into the actual document, you can see here we've got voice note feedback from Will at the top. We've got um, his handwritten work, which has been submitted by a document scanner that the child has done. I've written over the top of it using the pen tools. I've provided a grading tool and I've also got Will here who's able to play or I'm, I could play his voice reading that content to you. So again as a teacher I'm able to assess how well they're doing, what their ability is with their prosody, their tone and their speech. I can look for if they're self-correcting and getting any errors right um, or correcting any errors that they've got wrong and I can also just listen to the child read because actually it's quite a lovely thing to be able to listen to the child read and um, and again, I can provide high quality feedback much, much quicker than I will be able Using to written. something like or so they thought at this point will create more suspense than saying the problem was dragons, the dragons can fly. If you say to basically tell this story in the first sentence. But again, the point being, you can give that feedback in such a different way to giving it like super quick to each and every child as they come into the room or running around like a headless chicken as a teacher. So perfect opportunity. And I always say to schools that don't have one-to-one -one iPads in particular, what a perfect opportunity for you to be able to book out the iPad trolley for a particular piece of feedback and using that. Again, doesn't have to be an iPad, Chromebooks going into the IT, ICT suite, all of those options are still available with you show, with Shobi because it's got the web app version as well as the iOS version too. So we're now going to take a step forward and we're going to have a look at two pieces of integration. Quite quickly and quite briefly, the two features and uh, two packages and applications which come as part of a Shobi bundle. 
that you um your school may already have if it doesn't you know let us know and we can see what we can do for you but um basically we're going to have a look at explain everything now so explain everything is a fantastic feature um, let me just get it back up here sorry there we go so explain everything is a whiteboarding tool that allows you as a teacher to create content but mostly the difference between this and screen recording is the ability to manipulate the content so I was creating 20 30 minute self-teach videos during lockdown and this was golden because there's an opportunity for you to um, edit your work so let's have a look here so I'm going to add from file I'm going to use my native files icon and go to maths I'll find something in here somewhere. There we go. We'll upload this and we'll go to here, right on, and there we go. So you can upload PowerPoints, Word documents, whatever you so fancy. In this case, I've uploaded a worksheet that you can hopefully see here. What we can do at this point is we can go to the calculation itself and I can start to model as the teacher how to complete this particular one by tapping the record button. OK, everyone, so let's take a look at this first example here. Let's jump in and have a look. First of all, I'm just going to highlight here. We've got the ones. Oh, I'm not going to highlight in black. Um, we've got the ones here. Pay close attention to the ones, please. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I don't want to say bloody blah, blah. Right. I'm going to take it back now. So this is my little timeline. It's not effective teaching and learning to use the, the sentence and bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to go back, find where that was. Ones, please. Bloody bloody blah. blah. <laughs> Probably not the most professional I've ever been. And I'm just going to tap on the delete button here. And that's now deleted that part. And then I'm going to go and carry on recording. And that's really important that we focus on the ones because the ones is where we must always start. Now, if we listen back to it, you can see where my pen has been written on. It shows where your pen has been written on as well. Let's have a look back from there and play it back. And um, we've got the ones here. Pay close attention to the ones, please. And that's really important that we focus on the ones because the you can hear there's a slight distortion in there because one's been coming through the Zoom and the other one hasn't. But you can see there how that works with the ability to manipulate that content and really quickly and effectively amend content. Then it's as simple as tapping on the invite screen. You can either just give the students that invite code or you can tap the share icon and share that to show me as you would do any other document or any other feature. Tap on the share find Shobi and send it and assign it to your class. So super simple and super easy to do. There are masses, masses, masses more features that explain everything. For example, if you click start on this now, that's actually going to create a collaboration document. So your students could theoretically, eight or I'm not going to do this now, but eight or 10 of them could join in with this and they could manipulate and do the worksheet together. And you could actually send these as codes out to the students for them to work on. So the possibilities with Explain Everything are absolutely endless. You can also export that as a video format rather than as a HTML link. I'm going to jump back into Shobi now, and we're going to take a look at another one of our key integrations. This integration is an integration with Socrative. Socrative is the quizzing arm, the assessment arm of Shobi. And what it allows teachers and students to do is find out what they know and what they need to know and how they need to get there. So if we jump into the maths folder, for an example, and we jump into a place value where we spent some of our time earlier, we can see here that we have a start quiz and an end of block quiz. We're going to have a look at the end of block quiz to start with today. So we can jump into the shared items folder. And then what I've done is I've got Shobi Pro and I've got Socrative Pro. And what I can do is I can just tap here on this and that will actually pull all the content and the data from Sho Socrative because it's linked into Shobi. I can show the students' responses and I can show the results. I can see what they've done well and what they've struggled with. I can see some in gray, which are yet to be marked because they were a manual marking I set them to. And we can also see that basically lots of children got question five wrong. So we can jump to question five and we can actually see where they all went wrong. There were a massive variety of answers and we can look at what the question actually is, discuss that as a class and then jump back to it.
So this question level analysis is something that will be very familiar to many teachers um, up and down the country and around the world. But what this allows you to do, the integration is just a little bit more special. There's two things in particular. One here we can see where CX has been marked half marks. OK, now the reason why CX have marked it half marks is because they haven't explained their answer. So we can see further up that there's another student who's put CX and that's been marked as correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just manually override that. So I can go back through and I can mark using the QLA and going over it up and see that I'm going to give half marks because I'm feeling really generous for CX. But then I'm going to go and look at this one because it says CX is greater because, yeah, that's correct. Tick. And then I can move on to the next one. And I can manually grade just like this if I need to. So there's an opportunity to do that, which is a wonderful, wonderful feature to use. And you can see that there. And then what's really, really nice is what comes next. Because once you've actually the students completed the piece of work, you can actually then go into that particular student and then you can see that there's a beautiful, rich PDF document, which is pushed out to the students, it allows the students to see what they've got right and wrong. It shows the questions, it shows the answer that they put and whether it was right or wrong. And it actually allows the students to use that rich text and annotation to go back over and to say where they went right or wrong. Now, here is an example of a student in particular who has jumped onto their one. They've actually started to do their own version. For some reason, he decided to put a one. This child in particular, by the way, who shall remain nameless, his name has been changed on, on Shobi, um, but he is an absolute superstar, but sometimes finds it a little bit difficult to say when he's got something wrong. So he just somehow, some way put a one. But again, it allows that child to articulate their error. And in our school, we have massive focus on learning from your mistakes. And so for me, it was vitally important that, that child did that articulation. OK, so this is our place value um, assessment, which has been pushed out to the students and then they're able to do that second layer of assessment and feedback um, via this. This has saved a mass amount of time for me as a teacher. One of the reasons that it saves so much time is because I'm able to see whether the child does know it, they've just made a silly mistake or they don't know it and they need more help and support. And so for me, it's vitally important that we continue to do that in our school and that other teachers use this as a really good form of practice because we can save a significant amount of time and, and channel our efforts into what's needed by actually knowing if a child is struggling or whether they just made a silly error that they're able to recognize themselves. The last thing that I want to share today, which is a top tip uh, before we move into our last element, which is going to be looking at uh, our hints and tips, uh, our, sorry, our features, our new features that are coming is just one thing regarding social and emotional well-being. This is something that for me is pas I'm extremely passionate about. You, my details will be available at the end. Please do reach out to me if you want to discuss further. But it's something that I want to really try and harness and, and nurture within my students. And it's the opportunity for them to be able to articulate and feel like they have a voice within the classroom. And Shobi allows you to do that via the simple tools, which are free, which are available just by the communication. So here I set up a communication box. It's as simple as an assignment called communication box. And in here, you can see every single student back and forth has had a conversation with me about things that are really important and pertinent to them. Obviously, I'm not going to share them um, because they're personal to them. But you can see there is a back and forth going on between them. If I just jump into a couple, you can see that we've got questions and answers and, and things going backwards and forwards between these particular students. Really nice ability to be able to go back and forth and make them feel that their voices are heard which is such an important thing in any classroom, no matter where and what year group you're in. Lastly, is the opportunity for children to check in. Um, we did this in lockdown and we've continued it since. Uh, we use a blob tree, which we have licensing rights for, to be able to take a picture. 
um, and to distribute it. And then the students are able to go in and again, using the shared items folder, I'm able to see how those students are feeling, whether they're feeling high or low on the tree, if they're moving up or if they're moving down and where, why they're feeling like they are. And some days these children will have themselves on the top of the tree and sometimes they'll be really struggling with things. It gives you an opportunity to be able to quickly and easily see how those students are feeling. So blob trees um, and the ability to check in using Shobi, just an image, you can create your own image. It doesn't need to be a blob tree, it can be um, just a, a little happy, smiley, sad face, whatever it might be. Um, you can create your own, but then get the students to do that and articulate how they're feeling. And then as a teacher, obviously respond to that and they'll use it more and more and more as a, an open line of communication between you and them. So that is um, a quick whistle stop tour of my class. I hope you've enjoyed being able to have a sneak peek into another teacher's live class and see sort of how I do it. I'm not professing for a moment that I um, know everything. I do try to use the, the folders, which is a pro feature to really separate my work out for the students. And obviously lots of training's gone in with them, but it's such an opportunity to just sometimes give and go with this application because it is so simple, user intuitive that some students can, well, most students can just do it. And the perfect testament to that was in our lockdown situation when children shifted to online learning and pretty much business as usual um, as learning was concerned for the students who were able to access Shobi um, within our school community. And we had massive positive feedback on that. So let's hope we never get back to that situation again, but it shows the simplicity of the application and quite a lot of parents enjoyed learning how to do it too. So that is the end of my um, demo through my class and about back to school. And I've just got a couple of quick little feature updates for you um, to, to be able to share out with you. So if you bear with me whilst I flick over, just checking there's no other questions come in, which is great. So we've looked at that. We're now going to look at the pinned, no, that's a spoiler, that's a spoiler. There we go. We're gonna look at the pinned posts and assignments in groups. So going back to my class now, you'll have seen earlier um, when I was in the maths class and we were in morning maths, there was an additional comment which was sent to no one. And if you just swipe to the left in assignments, you can actually pin that to the top. And if I actually, if I then distribute that out, that will go to the top and it, you can use this now as like an instructional layout. So anything that you want to pin to the top, another great one. So you've got 20 or 30 pieces of documentation in, a, in a, um, an assignment, like that maths one where we have masses and masses of content. So we can go into that masses of content and I might want my students to work on something quite far down the bottom. Well, now I can just go, OK, I want them to work on that. I want them to pin it. And that will go right up to the top of the, um, of the screen like so. Nice and easy for the student to see. They can tap on it and once we're done, I can unpin it and it will go back to its original position. Uh, and so that's a really useful tool to be able to use. And that's out and live now. It's hidden, but you should be able to now utilize and use it. And that is a basic and a pro feature. Well, basic and obviously can be utilized by pro. The next two are slightly different features and they are not quite ready. So I've had to uh, beg, borrow and miss slightly steal uh, from our product team to get two quick looks. The first one is this assignment overview. So what assignment overview is going to be is for both basic and pro users to allow you to manipulate and move towards a class in this instance, Math 8A and be able to tap on the spanner wrench settings icon, go to the overview button, and that will show you all the grades, whether things have been collected, where, so grades obviously if you're pro, or for the basic users, whether things have been collected or whether things have been annotated and written on in a grade book type of assignment overview, um, but obviously minus the grades. You've got the opportunity as well to jump into subfolders as well if you're a pro user who's got a mass amount of content within their classes, as, as many do. This is available on web app and iOS app and will be due very soon. And it's going to be really helpful to be able to see super easily and super quickly the opportunity to jump in, 
and see, oh, I just need to mark that one student's work that I missed. And that's how you're going to be able to do that. And that's in the overview. Um, you're also going to have the opportunity to export via CSV file as well, all those grades and comments that you've made, which is going to be really exciting. So that's assignment overview, and that's due very soon. Something a little bit further out, which I'm, secret, I'm extra pumped about, is the ability to reorder assignments. So this is a mock-up here to show you what it might look, well, hope it will look like in the coming months. So ability to tap the edit button, and then just like you're able to do with folders at the moment, but you can choose to customize it by name, by sort by, and then the ability to drag up and down, and also the ability to multiple set to um, open, editable, or view only, and actually to be able to copy assignments as well in multiple forms. So that's coming, that's a couple of months, maybe, well, a while off yet. Um, I literally stole that from the development space. Um, so sorry, product, if you're watching this, but I had to give everyone at home an opportunity, off school, um, an opportunity to see this really exciting feature, which is going to make our lives as teachers incredibly more easy and gonna be able to point and direct and make our learning spaces just as we want for our students. And so that brings us towards the end of our presentation and webinar today. There are a few things that I just want to mention before you go. The first one is if you haven't already or you aren't already, please do think of becoming a Shobi Certified Educator. All information is on our website. It's a perfect um, opportunity for you to learn more about the Shobi product, including things that I've just shown you today, both on pro and basic. And it will give you a real flavour of things before you start your back to school. We've also got inspiration with Abdul coming up over the next couple of weeks, which is our VP of learning, and he's going to go through some real inspiring talks with key people in the education field to give you more information and inspire you in your learning. And then finally, and most importantly, Shobi is a caring space. It's a place where we want to help and support you, hence why we've done these webinars. If you want any further help and support, just drop me an email at chris at and I'll be sure to put you in the direction of anyone or help you myself. So at this point in time, we deliberately finish a little bit early to allow anyone else who may have any questions that they may like to ask. Please do um, take this opportunity to do so. I've seen some people who've come from the basics one onto this advanced one. So if I've still not answered a question, then let me know. Just raise a hand or um, ask a Q&A. And what we can do is we can actually, we'll finish a webinar here but we can continue the Q&A and that won't obviously be recorded as such. And we can just sort of go through and explain anything in particular that you might need or any questions that you might have. So pop them into the Q&A. We'll keep an eye on that um, for the next minute or two before we wrap up and leave. Lastly, I just want to say um, thank you for your attendance. Really appreciate your attendance today. Um, and as a result, we will be selecting at random um, a selection of people to receive one of our Shobi swag packs um, created and curated by myself. I'm very proud of these. You, I have subconsciously been using one of the swag pieces, which is this Shobi cup um, with its branding on. But there's actually an, a, full box, ooh, a full box of goodies here. Let me get my face in so it doesn't blur um, for you, including a water bottle and things like that. So after the webinar today, um, do keep an eye out, out for the recording to be able to share with your friends and family, family, if your family are teachers or you just want to share it with them, go ahead. Um, but share them with your friends uh, and teachers and colleagues and do keep an eye out because we will message um, some select lucky um, winners to post out a swag pack to you to say thank you for your um, attendance today. So just taking a look here, we have a question and answer. Um, thank you so much for this. Let's have a look. What is the best way to print a marked essay from Shobi so that it's in the A4 format? Great question. It probably depends a little bit on what you've uploaded it as originally. So if that student, for example, has uploaded that content as a PDF document and they've done it in landscape, that's going to be really hard to actually manipulate because you're not going to have the opportunity to do so because it's already set. However, if in Shobi you've got an opportunity to download as original or as what Shobi does. So basically Shobi makes anything, PowerPoint, anything like that 
it puts them into a workable PDF document, but it also allows you to export it, not as a PDF. So I do an assignment or an essay and I've marked it and I've marked it in, um, for example, it's been uploaded in Word. I've then manipulated it and written on it in Shobi. I can then export that. And as long as it's in the portrait version, it will go portrait um, in the A4 format. If that's not quite how it's working for you, then will you please drop me an email straight away and I'll have a look into that because it should do. The only thing I'm thinking there is if it's been uploaded as like a keynote, which might be in um, in landscape or you've created a new document and you've created it in landscape, not portrait, that might have some issues with the A4 printing format. But that's a cracking question. And um, it's one that I'd love to be able to help and support you with. So do please drop an email to chris at showby.com straight away and I'll get back to you straight away and we can have a conversation and, and, and see um, and see how, how we can help and support you with that. Okay, that looks like it's all the questions that have come through. An absolute pleasure to have been with you today. And um, thank you so much for taking your time. Good luck if you're going back to school. All the best if you're already back at school. And um, Shobi is consistently and always here to help and support you to get the best out of teaching and learning in your classroom. So do let us know if we can ever help and support you further. Have a great day. And thanks ever so much for joining us. Take care.